Hello, everybody. Hello. So great to see you. Oh, my goodness. First, I want to say thank you so much, Mimsy, for moderating the chat today. I appreciate you so much. Valeria, thank you so much. Thank you. Aw, that's so nice of you. And uh, I see that we have some new watchers today. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to be making this cute little Christmas tree quilted ornament. There is a free pattern in the description box. Mimsy has posted the link for the pattern in the live chat, but if you're watching on the replay, open up the description box. It's a one page PDF, and we're gonna be making this live today. If you're watching on the replay, feel free to skip to all of the fun creative stuff, and you can skip through the chatting, but I want to sit and just chat with you for a minute as everybody comes in. I missed y'all last week. Hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I hope you ate lots of yummy food. Good morning, everybody. So great to see you. I'm just going to give it a few minutes so that everybody can come in and join us if they want to catch the live today. So great to see y'all. Hello, hello, everybody. So I do have a question that I wanted to go over real quick that was asked before we started streaming from the Chicken Wire. And she said, or they said, uh, would you be willing to make a generic video on mug rugs that discusses batting, binding options, and quilting? I have some orphan blocks that I want to make into mug rugs. And then Mimsy, uh, the Chicken Wire, Mimsy uh, recommended viewing the playlist for the mug rug series. We just finished up a couple weeks ago a whole mug rug series. They give some really great ideas on mug rugs. Uh, and in those videos, you can see some basic techniques that I like to use. I like to make it quick. So I use the back as my binding and I show you in each one of those videos how to do that. But you can also bind your mug rugs just like a traditional quilt with a separate binding too. Uh, my favorite type of batting to use in mug rugs. I like my mug rugs on the thinner side. And so I prefer like an 80-20 batting because it's thinner. And I really love the feel of a quilt or a quilted project with the 80-20 batting inside. Uh, several different brands that you could use. You could find it at Joann's, a Walmart, your quilt shops. Have it like warm and natural. Um... Wow, all the names just left me. <laughs> There's several different ones at Joann's that I like to get, uh, but 80-20 is like one of my favorite types of batting to use. Quilting them is all going to depend on uh, your comfort level and where you are at in your quilting skills, right? Stitch in the ditch is perfect. You could hand quilt a mug rug pretty quickly, right? Uh, you can also do free motion quilting, which is a lot of fun. So it really depends on where your level is uh, with your skills. But mug rugs are the perfect size project to practice with. So maybe you're not doing free motion quilting yet, but it's something you want to learn. A mug rug is a great opportunity in a small project that you could sit down and really practice that with. But yeah, check out... Uh, Check out the Mug Rug series here on my channel, and there are tons and tons of videos out there by other really experienced crafters who can show you the processes as well. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> I just picked that up at Big Lots the other day. Good morning. Barbara. Oh, I hate to hear that, but uh, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm glad for the update. Jane, yeah, you see that up on the wall? Let me show you a close-up. Before, before I switch the camera over, uh, I'm in the process of recording a video for this set right behind me. I'll show you a close-up of it. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? The set is going to have the three different patterns. They're mug rugs, two mug rug patterns, two different ways. The orange peel on the side, super easy. I can't wait to show you that. And then the wall hanging, which is probably my favorite because I love that size of a project to do. 
Yes. And the wall hanging, the angel fabric was my great aunt's. I still have a little bit of her stash left from 20 years ago. The fabric that I did the angel silhouette on the wall hanging, that was hers. So yeah, you'll be seeing a video coming up soon on that set. But isn't that so pretty? Yes. Pretty, pretty. The chicken one. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I will tell you, with the mug rugs, there's so many different ways you can finish them too. Sometimes I don't even do a binding and I do them just the same way that we're going to be making this ornament, of course, without the hanger. So uh, keep this in mind as you watch this video and how we make this Christmas ornament that you don't necessarily have to bind your mug rugs either. You could finish it the same way that we're going to finish this ornament. That makes it even easier, right? And I like to say, I don't like to structure myself within the quilting rules. You know, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna put my mug rugs in a quilt show. <laughs> They're gonna be for myself to use or family and friends. And uh, so traditional quilting methods, um, when it comes to mug rugs that I make, however, I feel like whatever mood I'm in, that moment that I'm making it is the way that I finish it and there's several different ways to do it so keep your options open and do what is easiest and best for you orphan blocks make perfect mug rugs they do they do all right I'm going to switch the mat uh the screen over I'm going to show you this pattern this is the ornament we're making today and uh, I showed this on my Facebook and Hazel sent me a message and said that would be a perfect bookmark and I really have been looking at it and it would. It's a great size ornament. It finishes at three and a half by seven and a half. But yeah, she had a great idea, a Christmas bookmark. You could make these for your friends and family to give as Christmas presents. You sure could. Thank you so much, Miss Sally, for... Uh, for moderating my chat today. She said, I see the music stand behind you. Does that mean we are going to have a Christmas duet? Not today. Not today, Miss Sally. I have a huge headache today. And my hands are super shaky. So y'all bear with me today because I'm a little flighty. My head really hurts. And my hands are super, super jittery today. So if you see my hand shaking, it's actually not today because I'm nervous. It's just that's just my body today, so. Jackie, I will be sharing the angels up on the wall with you. Keep an eye out uh, on my channel because that video is coming out hopefully this weekend. We shall see. So here's the one page PDF. Again, the link is in the description box down below. You have the materials that you need. You have some basic instructions that I wrote out for you, but we're going to be walking you through the steps today. And then all of your template pieces right here. And one thing you'll notice different about the template pieces for this pattern is there's a little shaded area. I'm going to show you why that's there uh, here in just a minute. But I've already gone through and prepared all the pieces to save some time in today's video. And I'm gonna make two of these with you because I think it's gonna go by pretty quick. I'm all out of focus. I am out of focus. Let me see something. Give me just a second, I've gone blurry. I don't know why I'm blurry. The fun things of YouTube. Give me just a second. Let me see if it's something that I can fix. It looks good on my end. I don't know why it's blurry. Yeah, Diane says out of focus on the laptop, but not on the TV. Here on my computer screen is clear, but on my phone, it is blurry. <laughs> I don't know why. 
Jeannie says it's not blurry to her. So maybe watching on the replay, it won't be blurry and hopefully it straightens out. I'm not quite sure why it's blurry. I don't know why. Not blurry on your end. Okay, maybe it's the cell phone service. I don't know. <laughs> but I totally get what you're saying because on my phone it's blurry. On my computer, it's not. I'm sorry. Okay, so, yep, here we are. I've, like I said, I've already prepared all the pieces. Let me show you what you need. You need two 4-inch by 8-inch pieces of fabric, one for the front and one for the back. And then you need a piece of batting. Again, today I'm using an 80-20. And it's also the same size, four by eight. See how thin that batting is? I really like that for my ornaments and smaller projects like mug rugs and wall hangings. It's also my go-to batting for quilts too. I just love the way that it drapes. So there's those three pieces. And then you need a uh, piece of ribbon. I put seven inches. You don't necessarily need it that long. You just really need a piece of ribbon or a hanger the size that you want it to be. And then we need six green scraps bigger than each applique position. So these are your pieces of applique. You need a scrap that's a little bit bigger on all four sides for each one of your pieces. You can do them all different colors. You can do them alternating colors. You can even make your Christmas tree a different color if you want, right? It's your ornament. You need one little brown scrap for piece number G. That's the trunk of the tree. And then I said your favorite fusible for applique. Today I'm using Heat and Bond Light, but you could. there's all kinds of fusible out there. You could even use freezer paper if that's the way you want it to go. And then at the very, very bottom, I put optional embellishments like beads, sequins, bells, buttons. You could really dress up this tree all different kinds of ways. Today I'm just doing the tree, but uh, I thought I'd put that on there because I think it would be really cute if you embellished your tree and decorated it, right? And there's a million different ways you could do that. You have a little box down here and that just shows you the placement for each one of your applique pieces. I'm going to warm up this iron and get it warming up. So that's the pattern and I'm just going to move that right off to the side. I'm going to bring the top piece for both ornaments over. Yeah, I missed y'all last week. I missed you last week. There's those pieces and those pieces. I'm trying to scoot that where you can see it. I still have the heat and bond on the back side of my pieces. So when I traced my pieces, I like to transfer the letter or number, whichever one is on the pattern, over to my pieces so they don't get randomly mixed up. Some of the pieces are very close to the same size and so we don't want to get them confused. I even drew in the little shaded area marked on there. That's the area that's going to tuck up under the next piece of applique. So it does include an extra bit on your pieces that's going to tuck up under and you'll see that here in just a second. <laughs> I'm clear now. Yeah, you can hear my bird. He you should have heard him about five minutes before we started. He was not happy at all. He's calmed down some, so hopefully he'll take a nap or something. He was not happy. Peggy said this would make cute napkins. It would. You could adjust the size. You know, with these, with these templates... If you're using Adobe Reader, which is a free PDF program that opens and you can view your PDFs and you can print them, if you don't have Adobe Reader, I highly recommend that you go grab that off of the internet. It is free. 
Uh, but with that, you can increase the size of your print. You could make this bigger, right? You could make this bigger. You could make it whatever size you want it to. So I have each one of my pieces and on the instructions, see how the tree trunk is actually sewn into this ornament and finishes off the very bottom of this ornament. On the instructions, I say to start with your placement with the tree trunk lined up to the raw edge. So here's my piece number G. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in place. Just like that. And you can press these pieces as you go, or you can lay them all out and then press them. And that's kind of what I do because I'm always afraid to commit pressing because I might want to shift something around and get them all laid out first. So if you're ready, you can press the pieces as you go. But if you're like me and you're a little bit scared to commit right away, then you can lay them all out first and then press them. We're gonna lay these pieces out starting at the bottom and working our way up. So you see P piece F goes down first after the trunk. We're gonna overlap piece number F or piece F right over top of that Christmas tree just like that. <laughs> Jerry says she can't hear Poppy, she's jealous. I have a headache, Jerry. I wish I didn't hear him. He is really loud. He's actually downstairs. <laughs> and when I can still hear him, not right this minute, but yeah, when he gets going, you can hear him outside. So there's piece F. Next, we bring in piece number E. We're going to overlap piece number F. I say number, it's a letter. Piece letter F, just a little bit like that. That's E. Oh my word, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Y'all don't make me cry. I. I'm really like in a weird Christmas mood. <laughs> that was E. Next we're going to bring in D. I'm in a really weird Christmas mood. And I'm a bit emotional. Debbie, you're trying to make me cry. There we go. D. Is it just me though, y'all? Is it just me that's in a really weird Christmas mood this year? Do you think it's just all the weird stuff happening with COVID and the shutdowns and all the stuff? I've been wondering, is it just a weird mood that I'm in? Or is a lot of people experiencing weird moods this year? Mimsy, you are too. I'm not glad that you are, but I kind of feel better knowing that I'm not the only one. <laughs> Hmm, I'm sorry that you feel that way. But yeah, I'm just having a hard time getting into Christmas. I had a hard time really getting into Thanksgiving. And that's my favorite. Thanksgiving is my favorite. This is piece number C. See, we're just overlapping each one. And if you like that and you don't want it to keep shifting while you're putting the pieces down, go ahead and press it. So I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. It's just this holiday season has started off a little rough. I'm going to just be honest with you. It just really has. Ooh, I kind of really like that with the white. I really like that. Yeah, it's just been weird. Thank you so much, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Teresa, this is your first time here. I'm so glad you're here. Make sure to grab this pattern. It's, it's free down in the description box. And it's pretty quick and simple. P 
Pat, your daughter has a cockatoo? Yeah, they're really loud. <laughs> they're really loud. Valerie, you made it today. Yay. Diana, I know, right? The white looks like snow. I like that. I'm going to be really honest. You know, I like keeping it real with y'all. <laughs> I thought that my fabric choices were going to be really cute with this. But once I made it, I'm like, it's cute, but there isn't a lot of contrast with these pieces, right? It just kind of all blends together. And from far away, it just looks like a solid piece. You ever do a project and then afterwards you're like, ugh. I could have chose better, right? This has more contrast, and I'm really liking the green and white one. See, I think I could spread this up a little bit. See, this is why I don't commit, because I like to shift. <laughs> I like to shift a little bit after I put my pieces down. And there's a little wiggle room. I made the pieces bigger so that they should overlap with uh, a good little extra bit underneath of each one of the pieces. All right, Lisa, there we go. Like that. And like that. You could even make a little star, right? Or put a star bead at the top. I think that looks good, and I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm going to go ahead and just press this down just like that. Sally, my foot really hurt last night. Um, Y'all did a Zoom. I really wanted to be there because I really feel like I need, <laughs> I need some social time. But uh, I had the tape that you recommended. And uh, the first time I took the tape off, I did it just taking the tape off. It was horrible. So then you said to soak your foot, you know, to soak it. And I did. So I was in the tub soaking my foot so I could replace the tape. And that worked like magic. After about 15 minutes, I could just take the tape right off. I was like, yes. It is helping a lot. And when I have the tape on, my foot feels a lot better. So I will be wearing the tape for however long it takes to get rid of it. <laughs> Terry, yeah, you could add the beads. I think that would that would help a lot, wouldn't it? All right, so there is the tree. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm doing this first, because you could have went ahead and made your layers, right, and sewed all the way around like we're getting ready to do. And then put your applique on, and that's an option if you wanted to do it that way. If you do it that way, you'll need to quilt the or stitch down the bottom of your tree trunk, where if you do it this way, the bottom of your tree trunk, well, I guess you stitch it down anyway, right? The bottom of my tree trunk is actually sewn into that seam. So you could do it either way. I went ahead and did it before we're creating our layers. Well, I guess it would help if I take the paper off of this piece, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let me try that again. Hazel, I have plantar fasciitis. I've had it two other times in my life. Once when I uh, owned a coffee shop and I was on my feet for ridiculous hours. <laughs> ridiculous hours and uh, that was the first time I had it and then a couple years ago I got it again and I suffered for months so this time uh, I just started getting it maybe two weeks ago and so uh, Sally recommend taping your foot so I got some tape and I've been wearing that since Friday I think it came in Friday last week, and it's helping. So hopefully I won't have it forever this time. All right, so my pieces are fused down. 
Okay, so to layer this and make it really super simple, I'm going to put the batting down just like this. Can you hear my bird? He's, he's at it again. Then we're going to take our back fabric and we're going to lay that right on top of the batting just like this with the pretty side facing up. Okay, I know it's hard to tell because this is a solid and both sides are kind of pretty a little bit. <laughs> but if you have a patterned fabric, make sure the pattern is facing up. Then we're going to take some ribbon. We're going to take two pieces of ribbon as our hanger. Just like that. You know what? I like to sometimes do this because it just helps me. I'm going to take a piece of tape. I'm going to tape the ends of this ribbon so they stay exactly the way I want them to. <laughs> when I just put it in there and pin it, there's always this little shifting thing that happens. I just taped the very edge of that and the tape is going to stick outside so we're not sewing through the tape just like that. But it's going to hold my ribbon exactly perfect. Just like this. Like that. And like that. And now I can just put a pin just to hold it there. But I don't have to worry about the ribbon because it's slippery. Shifting and going all funny. And then we're going to take the top of our ornament. And we're going to put that pretty side facing down just like this. And just like this. And now we can throw some pins in there. It's a little hard to pin on this cutting uh, pressing board because it has fabric on it, but I'm going to try. Let me put this hanger right in the center like that and squishy it down. And that tape is not inside this ornament. It's just right on the outside. But yes. You could finish your mug rugs off just like this too because we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine and sew all the way around making sure to leave an opening so we can turn this right side out and this would be an easy way to finish your mug rugs. Let me throw one pin right in the middle just to really hold that in place. And I'll do the same thing with this other ornament. Make sure it's all lined up. Just like that. Match up those raw edges. Now I don't have to worry about my ribbon slipping and sliding. You know, that stuff is slippery on itself. <laughs> and one rip pin right in the middle. Now I'm going to sew all the way around the whole outside with a quarter inch seam allowance. So let me get that set up. You, of course, could change that if you want. I will be trimming a little bit of that allowance away once we're done. Okay, I'm going to move you over to the sewing machine so you can see how I do that. All right. I'm going to leave my opening right on the left side. Just like that. Quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to be sewing right off the edge all the way around and doing a uh, back stitch at the start and at the finish, okay, to lock that in place. Just 
just turning everything around. I'm going to go ahead and remove that pin, but I'm holding the ribbon down with my finger so it doesn't move. You could also do this completely different like we do our mug rugs and use the back, make the back bigger and fold that over as you're binding or do a little binding separate just like you would a quilt. That would be adorable too, right? That would be a lot more work. This, this way is super fast. I'm going to leave a good size opening because y'all know I struggle turning my things right side out. So there's the first one, and I'm going to sew this second one. Take that pin out, hold the ribbon with my finger. Coming along the bottom. Coming back to the start. Remember to do your back stitch. That's going to keep it locked in there as we do the next step. Vicki, I did see that website. I did. I checked it out. I thought that was pretty awesome. Doris, uh, for me, it's just fast just to sew off the edge and then flip it around. Uh, when I try to pivot, sometimes I don't pivot exactly at a quarter of an inch. So for me, it's just easier just to go all the way off and line up the raw edge to my presser foot and keep going. But you could stop and pivot. You could. It's just for me, it's faster this way. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to trim these little corners. Being really careful not to cut that little corner stitch there. We don't want to cut that off. And now, because I used a quarter of an inch, I am going to trim some of this seam allowance up just like this. That's going to get rid of that extra tag from the ribbon and the tape. That's gone now. I like to leave the opening part that tucks in a little bit bigger, so I'm not going to trim that part just around it. That just helps me. It gives me a little bit more to tuck in there and keep in place as we finish this ornament. If you used a different seam allowance, less than quarter of an inch, then you wouldn't have to go back and trim this, right? <laughs> quarter of an inch, that just seems to be my go-to for seam allowances. So that one's trimmed. We'll do the same thing on this next one.
getting rid of that little tag like that so what is the weather like where y'all are I have a friend miss uh, Maureen who lives in West Virginia she got nine inches of snow <laughs> nine inches of snow today it's a little bit warmer than it was yesterday here on the east coast of virginia nine inches of snow already i'm going to let you know that the area i live in if we got nine inches of snow we would be shut down for a week if not longer depending on how fast it melted <laughs> Our area would be shut down. We are not set up <laughs> in my area to handle nine inches of snow. Now we can flip these right side out. Ooh, it's in the teens where you are, Debbie. 34 where you are, Vicki. It's cold in the UK. Jeannie, I am so surprised at your weather because I always thought that it never got cold where you are and you've already gotten snow this year you've gotten snow before we have <laughs> so i'm kind of surprised by your weather sunny and chilly in chicago 57 in wilmington north carolina beverly i think your weather and our weather is pretty close today It's warmer today than it was yesterday. I'm just flipping this right side out and poking out these little corners. Jerry, yeah, seam allowances in clothing and bat, you know, different things are a lot different than in quilting, aren't they? Y'all, I got the greatest little pokey tool from the Dollar Tree. Check out your Dollar Tree. They have these little styluses. Little end, big end for embossing. <laughs> it's my new little corner pokey out tool for a dollar. For a dollar. It works great. It's a multifunctional tool. <laughs> For a buck. Just poking out those corners. Like that. We'll flatten that out here in just a second. Let's flip this one. What section? Were you turning things located? What side was my opening on? Is that what you're asking, Pat? I left my opening, let's see, on this one, it's on the right side. So there's my opening right there. You could put it at the bottom, but I wanted to leave a little bit of a bigger opening because for me, it just makes turning so much easier to have a bigger opening. So I put mine on the side on this piece. Dixie Doodles, uh, our Dollar Tree redid their crafting section a couple months ago and there is so much, so many new things at our Dollar, you know all the Dollar Trees are different, right? I'm really impressed with the crafting section at our Dollar Tree. They've upped the game. They even have little painting canvases. I saw some fat quarters in there the other day. They have paints. They have all kinds of stuff. I'm really impressed with what they've done. Who doesn't love the Dollar Tree anyway? <laughs> right? Let's go in and poke these corners out. Like that, that, and one more, y'all. That's it. 
That wasn't that bad for turning two, because this is usually the slowest part of the whole process for me. We're going to flatten these out. I'm going to give them a press, and then we're going to bring them back to the sewing machine, because I'm just going to do a running straight stitch all the way around, sort of finish this off, and close that opening. You could hand stitch it though. If you don't want to do this running stitch all the way around, then you could just hand stitch that opening closed, right? I'm going to try to be careful because I don't know how heat proof that ribbon is. <laughs> just trying to stay away from that, but press this ornament a little bit. Jeannie, look how pretty my opening is. <laughs> I'm impressed. Flatten it out. I've got a string hanging out there. So today, this morning, in the mailbox is my Christmas ornament for the ornament swap. That's exciting. It's hitting the road today. Just giving that a quick press. See, at this point, you could have made the ornament and not put your applique on yet. And at this point, oh, this opening's not as pretty as the first one. That's okay. See that? <laughs> at this point, you could now put your applique on. And if you're using freezer paper to do your applique, I'd actually wait until this point. Because sometimes when using freezer paper and glue to do applique and you're turning that whole project right side out, the edges will sometimes lift because, you know, it just does sometimes. So if you're using freezer paper, now is when I would add the applique, right? Heat and Bond does a pretty good job at keeping all of those edges down nice and secure until you're ready to stitch them down. Zella said you could glue the opening. Absolutely. That sure beats hand sewing, doesn't it? Sure does. I'm going to go ahead and bring these over to the sewing machine. We're going to do a quick running stitch all the way around. It'll be nice and quick. Pretty close to the edge. all the way around. So there's the first one. Let's bring the second one over. more stitch. <laughs> All right, so there is our running stitch. See if you can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my feet. Now, here's the thing. 
I know we have lots and lots of new viewers on my channel and you might want to get started with applique but the thought of stitching all of these pieces down is something that's going to stop you from doing it. Get the heat and bond in the red package because at this point you would be done. You'd be all done with your ornament. Because I've used heat and bond light, or if you use freezer paper, you're going to need to stitch these pieces down. You could do it with a straight stitch with your regular uh, presser foot, right? I'm going to switch over to a free motion foot because that is so much faster for me. And I'm going to stitch down these pieces. So there's my free motion foot. I'm going to lower my feed dogs. If you don't have that option, more than likely, if you have a foot that looks close to this, like a darning foot, you might have a little plate that covers your feed dogs. You could put that on there. I'm going to lower my stitch length to a zero. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch down these pieces. Let's see. Let's start here at the base of the tree. I'm going to bring that bobbin thread up like that. And then I'm going to just pull these little threads right under that foot just like that. And now we can get started. Hopefully you can see, I know my hands are kind of in the way. I'll try to keep them out of the way. Just really wanted to shift over so I could cut that thread. And now I'm just going close to, but not directly on the edge, on each one of these little pieces. Which is easier said than done if you have shaky hands like me today. going to go straight up this tree. My stitch is going to be a little little wonky. You have to do a little bit of traveling to get all of these seams, right? So there we are, just like that. <laughs> I stitched down those pieces. Now granted, they're, it's a little wonky, but it's also very quirky and cute too. So there's that one. I'm going to show you really good on the cutting mat here in just a second. It's so great to see y'all. I'm so glad y'all are hanging out with me today. If you just joined, this is a free pattern. The link is in the description box. I'm going to stitch down these pieces really quick, and then we'll take a look at uh, 
Take a look at them on the cutting mat because you can see them much better over there. these little starting threads. If you're going to embellishment your tree, embellish your tree, I would probably do that after the quilting so that your beads or buttons, all of that fun stuff, is not in the way of where you want to stitch your pieces down. You could also use a thread to quilt that blends into your applique pieces so that if it's a little wonky like mine is today, then it kind of blends in and you don't even see it, right? Of course, you also have all of the other stitches on your machine, like a blanket stitch would be adorable with this, or a zigzag or a satin stitch. Don't forget about those. Back to where we started. And like that, both of our ornaments are quilted. Now you could also do, let me show you on this, on this camera. You could also quilt the background with a cute little meandering stitch or hand quilt it, whatever you wanted to do. But I wanted to do two this way so you could see what the difference would, would look like, right? If you just wanted to keep it nice and simple, keep it nice and quick, then you don't have to do all of that background quilting and it's still really adorable, right? Let me give this a press, just nice and flat. See how taping that ribbon before you add it in there helps keep it. I did not tape this one. See what happens? For me, that just makes it so much easier. So there we go. There we go. Thank you, Belle. Yeah, Mimsy said uh, a little wonky equals homemade. Absolutely. I think it adds a little bit of charm, right? Hazel said, I find the Juki light not too bright, so I can, so I use an angle position lamp. It's perfect. Yeah, actually for the videos, I put tape on some of my LED lights because uh, on mine anyway, with the video camera, the lights are too bright. And it just shines up the whole area underneath the needle too bright in the video. So I actually have to cover up some of the LED lighting on my machine for the videos. But when I'm sewing, I take it off. Oh, Sally said Christmas postcard. Oh, that would be such a great postcard, Sally. See, y'all have great ideas. Bookmarks, postcards, yes. Connie, you made it. You made it live. I'm so glad you're here. So there we are. I think they're adorable both ways. This one's very cute with the white and the green, don't you think? 
and then scrappy, all different colors. I like all three. This is probably my least favorite <laughs> because of the con. There's not much contrast there, but she's still pretty, right? She's still pretty. There's the back in case you wanted to see the back. Of course, you could go to town quilting these. You could just quilt the whole entire thing, all of the pieces, the background. Yeah, you'll have to come back on the replay because we walk you through all the steps. But while you're here, make sure you grab this because this is a free pattern and it's just one page. You get the templates, the measurements, basic instructions, and in this video, I walked you through it. Gift tags, yes. Yeah, Mimsy said I should embellish this one. I think you're right. And uh, Sally just mentioned a great idea too, taking the ink tense pencils and maybe do some shading on there. Define those pieces, add some color. Dawn said use variated thread. That would be gorgeous too. So y'all have, y'all share all these great ideas. Yes. Put it in a junk journal. Yes. Oh, that would be perfect. That would be perfect. How many people here make junk journals or some kind of handmade journals? Maybe you make journals from repurposed books, upcycling books, stuff like that. I love journals. I love making them. I love using them for all different purposes. This would look great. Ooh, Kathy said, what about adding gold buttons? Yes. Yes. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought I had more than this. I have this little tray here that I keep next to my machine with all the tidbits and the feet that I use all the time. I had this random button from a shirt that I was doing. I thought I had more in there, but evidently I don't. Yeah, wouldn't that be cute? Buttons all over it. Gold buttons. I have a white one. That's all the buttons that I have close by, I think. That's it. <laughs> Sandy said, I sew my own journals. I love that. Kimberly loves journaling. Debbie, you do. Dixie Doodle said, does collecting junk for a, <laughs> for, for a journal count? Absolutely. That is the journaling process. That's very important. That might be one of the most important parts is collecting of the stuff that you make the journals with, right? Yeah, you're journaling. Star buttons. Yes. I'll have to pick some of those up. I don't have any that are in the shape of a star. Sally, I have. Do you want to see it? It's right here because I've already planned stuff in, <laughs> into next year. I've already planned stuff into next year. I am going with the, um, uh, what is this called? It'll come to me. It'll come to me. I modified my one for last year, and I'll just show you the difference, how my year started. This is the way it, I bought it, right? What is this? Happy Planner. It's a happy planner. I used to make my own planners. Last year, I ran out of time, and I had lots of stuff to plan, so there was no time to make one. So I bought this. When I bought it, it was this thick. And after I modify it, is that thick? See that? <laughs> I had to get the big disc. 
I'm going to try to not make it this thick this year. That's too much stuff in there. So I'm going to try to keep the original disc with this Happy Planner. But yeah, Happy Planner for 2021. I love it. Let me just show you one of the, or a couple of the reasons why. All right, you can make your own little things and these pop in and then go pop right back in, right? So you can move these elements really easily throughout your book. And you can add things like pocket pages. I'm gonna skip that page because that had some stuff on there that I don't wanna show. Of course, it came with all of your yearly planners and stuff like that, right? Your months, they're already tabbed. You can buy pages that are already tabbed for you and these can pop in and pop out. You can move them around. I kind of really liked that about the Happy Planner. And uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with for 2021. You can move the month, the whole month up to the front of the book if you wanted to. It has a great spread for a month at a glance, and then it breaks it down. Of course, there's different layouts for each. You know, each planner has a different kind of layout. Like this one is this way. And for 2021, I went with this style for the week. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if I'm going to like it because I'm kind of used to this. But we'll see. And then... Like I made my own sections. I'm trying to make sure I don't have personal stuff in here. Not really. Bookmarks with pockets. All my stuff. This marks where I am in my book, right? Each week this gets moved to the next page. So yeah, the happy planner. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> my happy planner. You know what? Maybe we'll do a junk journal series. Because I'm kind of running out of ideas for Christmas ornaments, to be really honest with you. Like, I've been struggling. And I thought, well, maybe it's my mood. Because I'm not... Poor Harlan. He loves Christmas. And I feel bad because I think I'm kind of making a... You know, I'm such a bah humbug this year. I feel bad. And I'm like, you know, I'm struggling coming up with a couple of ideas to keep this series going. And that's just me being honest, y'all. I, I like to keep it real with you. I have one more ornament. And that's it. I'm at a loss. So maybe we'll switch into doing a junk journal. We'll have quilty stuff, fabric stuff in it, right? So it's relatable. And maybe you'll enjoy that series. Maybe it'll be something new for you. Or inspire you to try something different and maybe you're just like uh oh, this is not my thing and I'll catch you on the next series I don't know <laughs> let me go ahead and switch this screen over let me pull these over one more time in case you just jumped on this is what we made today free pattern make sure you grab it it's in the description box down below very very cute Tons of different ways you could really finish these off. Customize them, different colors. Super cute. So make sure you grab that pattern. Yeah, junk journal series. Belle says, I just do art journaling, not planning anything. I have all different kinds of journals. I'm a planner. I have to stay organized with my life, right? So a planner is one way that I use journals. Uh, but I have a travel journal that goes with me when I travel, and I put all the little tidbits that I collect while we're gone in that book. It's like a book of memories from travel, you know. Uh, I have a sewing cook. A cookbook journal where I handwrite recipes and you know when you buy a box of 
macaroni and cheese, there might be some random recipe on the back of the box and you say, well, that looks kind of good and you cut it out. My cookbook is filled with those kind of things from soup cable, uh, can, labels. I cut those off and put them in there. I handwrite stuff. So I have a cookbook journal. I have a journal that I just jot down memories and put pictures in. So yeah. An art journal is something that I would love to get into because I like to paint and I like to draw. And having a designated book for that I think would be really nice. Sandy says, I'd love a junk journal series. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. There we go. I do have one more ornament that I sort of have planned up for next week. So maybe we'll do one more ornament and then I'll be planning in the meantime to transition into a journaling series. The thing is, y'all, with the junk journals... There's so many ways that you can make a junk journal and you can have all the fancy gadgets to help you through the process, but you don't need all of those, right? Where there's a will, there's a way to get it done. My phone is showing me blurry again. I hope it's not blurry on your end. But um, yeah, so if we do a junk journaling series and you see me using a crocodile or any of those things, just know that there's other ways to do things and you don't necessarily have to have the tools and the gadgets to do it. You just have a, to have a will to want to learn, right? I think that would be fun. Maybe we can make a fabric quilty cover for it. Who knows? I have to think about it. So it's been so great hanging out with y'all today. Just want to thank y'all for doing the super chat. I want to thank you if you gave me a thumbs up. Thank you so much. You would be surprised how much that actually helps channels here on YouTube. It's a huge help. And then if you leave a comment, that is also like a hug to my channel. So thank you so much. Y'all, there's links in the description box. There's a link to the playlist for the whole series of these Christmas ornaments. This is video like six or seven or eight. I've lost track now. Uh, yeah, so there's a link to the playlist. There's a link to contact me on Facebook. You could go over to my Facebook page. You could join my Facebook group, the creative crew. We love to have you over there. And then there's a link to my Etsy shop. So if you want to get in touch with me, but you don't do Facebook at all, you can send me messages and pictures right through Etsy. Did you know that? You could use it like a little messaging app and send me some pictures of your stuff. I'd love to see it. I hope y'all have a fantastic week. And uh, yeah, y'all have given me something to think about. I'm excited, actually. So thank you so much. <laughs> I needed something to be excited about. Change my mood. I'm working on it. I've been working on it, but the struggle is real, y'all. A journal series. I like that. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Thursday. Bye, everybody. Da -da -da -da. I can never find the button to end the live. Here we go. <laughs> Bye, everybody.